in-house crafters. I'm so excited that you're here with me today. I've got a couple of fun little uh, Valentine projects or love projects, whatever, if you don't do Valentine's Day and just want a gift um, for someone that you love. Um, excellent. Um, I got these cute little drawstring bags from the Target Dollar Spot. So that's one of the projects that we're going to work with. And these, they were actually a dollar. I know some uh, in their dollar spots, some of their stuff is not actually a dollar, but these were a dollar. Um, so I thought it would be fun to use some uh, Chalk Couture ink um, with, with this project and um, some of my little Valentine transfers that I have. Um, I mean, I chose to use ink because ink can be heat set on the fabric. Um, I'm going to use my easy press to do that. You could also use a, um, a regular clothes iron. Um, but that way, if, um, if the person receiving the gift wants to wash them, they will be able to do that because it will, the ink will be set. So um, that is one of the projects, but we actually have another small project that we're going to do. Um, I bought a package of, and I thought I brought them over here, but I didn't, but I bought a package of these little tiny wooden hearts. They're super thin wood hearts, um, and I punched the hole in it. It did not come with the hole, but um, if you've seen me use my cropo dial before, um, that's what I used to punch the hole in here. Um, this is a super soft wood, so um, it was really easy to do. Um, didn't have any problem using my cropo dial for that. Um, so what I thought we would do with this is, um, also use some little wooden beads and I have some red twine. You can see that there. Um, I thought it would be fun to do a little mini, uh, wood bead, um, decor piece, I guess you could say for, um, somebody to hang or, or lay around, um, their house for a little bit of, um, Valentine decoration or um, just to remember um, the person who loved them so much that they made it for them. So um, if you have not already done so, I would really, really love for you to join um, my free crafting club. It is the Hen House Crafting Club. It is on Facebook. And um, if you are interested in getting in there, I would love to have you in there and I can get you a link if you just comment hashtag club, hashtag C-L-U-B, and I will get you a link to that free crafting club. And in fact, I am sharing my video over to that right now as we speak um, because I want to make sure that all my hands are out on this video. So um, a great thing about having a club is that um, Facebook will show you more of the posts from groups um, on Facebook than they will from business pages. So that is why I created um, a club as a place for me to share my crafts and um, also be able to see what you guys are working on. Um, but it's, um, it's also just a great way to make sure that we're staying in touch and make sure that we're seeing each other's stuff because it's in a group rather than just a post, um, on my timeline or on, um, my business page. So, two fun, quick and easy crafts that we've got going on here. And I am just now finding my post so that I can share it. So I apologize if it's taking too long. So what are you guys doing on this fine weekend? Tell me, do you um do you decorate for Valentine's Day? I don't usually do a whole lot of decorating for Valentine's Day, but I love, love, love um hearts. And, well, as you can see, I have a little wood bead um, heart thing behind me, and it says love on it. I love that kind of stuff. Um, I like hearts, uh, you know, on fabric or on uh, chalkboards or, you know, the wooden variety, whatever. I like them all. 
um, and they don't have to be for Valentine's Day. Like the one behind me is um, just white and wood wood tone, um, and I use it year round. You know, I don't just put it up for Valentine's Day at all. So let's get started here. I'm going to turn my camera down so that you can see what um, I am working on. The first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to paint the wooden heart so that um, it can dry a bit while we're working on um, the fabric bag. And we're just going to put a light coat of paint on it um, so that it'll dry quickly. But also because um, if you know me at all, I love the rustic look. And so um, I'm totally okay with some of the wood showing through. So let's turn this down so that you can see my workspace. So I've got my little heart here and I have just some uh, acrylic crafting paint. Um, I don't remember where I bought crafting paint anywhere. You can get it at Walmart, Michaels, Hobby Lobby, all of those places. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit of this on, um, I have this little plastic plate here. I'm gonna pour some on here. It won't take very much. So we will have, it'll be a little bit easier to work with than trying to dip my brush in that little hole because my brush is too big. So I didn't have any little bitty brushes. I don't know why. But so we're just going to quickly paint this white. And again, um, this heart came in a package. I got it at Hobby Lobby. And um, of course, they were on sale for like 40% off because... You know, eventually Hobby Lobby puts everything on sale, right? Um, so, there's that. Alright, so while that side is drying a little bit, we're going to work with our little fabric bags. Now, which bag did you like best? Do you like the stripes or the hearts? I'm thinking um, that I'm going to put the I love you transfer on there um, and the reason being is this one is more of a bold pattern and I figured it would show up better on the printed background of these fabric bags. Um, Fostering brag bags came from Target. They're super duper cute. They were in their dollar spot and um, so I thought how cute would that be to um, decorate these but then it would also be a little gift bag for my um, other project that I'm doing, which is the heart um, wood bead garland. So, do you guys have a preference on which one we do today? Eventually I'm gonna do both of them, and actually we could do both of them while we're here working. Let's see, I'm not seeing any comments yet as far as which bag you guys like so um you know what this is super quick and easy so i think we'll go ahead and just do both i think that's an excellent idea put my lid back on my paint so that i don't make too big of a mess all right and then we have our ink here um this i love you came in um a set let's see three six so there's nine um, in the set, nine little designs, um, and this was just one of them, and I cut it off of the page. So it comes with all of these other designs, which is excellent because you can do so many different projects with these little transfers, and um, I'm just going to show you two today. So um, all I had to do was cut it off of the larger sheet, and then I'm going to remove it from the backer paper making sure not to stick itself together because it can be difficult to uh, pull apart if you do that. So um, because we're not putting this on a slick surface, we're putting it on fabric, there's no need to fuzz it. So we're not going to be using the fuzzing cloth today. I guess we'll start here on the left. And I'm just going to sort of, I'm going to center it, but I'm going to bring it down a little bit low instead of centering it this way because when I draw the drawstring, it's going to kind of wrinkle up the fabric up here, and I don't want to wrinkle up the design. I want you to easily be able to see the design. So I'm just going to do a little bit there, 
and we're going to use the black ink and then what I'll do is I'll just quickly lift it up move it on to the other bag and we will move forward so my uh, ink is already stirred up and ready to go it is a yogurt like consistency and I'm just going to load a little bit on my mini squeegee and glide it Oop, I almost forgot and messed up so I'm putting a piece of plastic um, you could use cardboard or something like that um, in because I want to prevent the um, ink from soaking through to the back side of the bag and making you know a mess back there so I almost forgot to do that so I've got that right up underneath there to protect the back side okay so now we're just gonna glide this mini squeegee over the entire design with our black ink and these little bitty designs do not use a whole lot of product but they sure turn out cute. All right, so I've just made sure to remove any excess ink from the top of the transfer. And I'm gonna gently lift to reveal the first one. And then I'm gonna move it over here so that we can do the second one. So now I'm going to move in one direction since I wasn't able to really press that down and make sure it was stuck. Um, I'm basically going to be sticking it down as I glide over it. All right, so now that it's nice and stuck, I'm going to come back in another direction just to make sure that the ink is um, has gotten through the screen. And at the same time, I'm removing some of the excess. All right, I can put the excess back in the jar. So as you can see, this doesn't take very much product at all. And so these jars of ink, when you're doing these little projects, can last a really long time. Okay, so let's lift up this transfer. See how it turned out. There we go. And I'm gonna drop that in a pan of water. Had a little bit of bleeding on the O here and that's kind of what happens when it's not stuck down good um, so you just kind of take the chance if you're uh, reusing the um, transfer before you wash and dry it but I still think it's super cute and um, it doesn't bother me at all so now we're gonna set the bags aside to dry um, once they are dry, I'll use my Easy Press um, on 350 for 30 seconds, and I will place a Teflon sheet over it, heat it for 30 seconds, and then I'm going to turn the bag inside out, place the Teflon sheet, and heat for another 30 seconds on the back side, and um, that is going to... Um, Make sure that my ink is nice and set. That way, if um, anyone wants to wash the bag, um, they can do so. So let's just move these aside so that they can dry. Okay. So now we're going to come back to the heart. It's nice and dry. We just had a little thin coat. And I'm going to come back and paint the back side. Let's see. Sandy said she likes the stripes. And that they're both cute. They are both really cute. And I'm going to be gifting both of them. And since they're so quick and easy, I figured why not? Let's just do them both. So now we've got another thin coat over here. I'm going to let that dry a little bit. 
So what we're going to do is I have these little beads here. I have some larger ones too with a larger hole, but I really want this wanted this to be um, a smaller um, dainty kind of dainty like project. So I don't think I'm going to use the larger ones today. I don't know if you can see the difference there. Um, the holes are definitely bigger, so this one is nicer to put a uh, ribbon through or something like that. Um, but we're going to be using some red twine, and um, it'll work nicely with these smaller beads. Um, small gray beads, but they have the tiniest hole, and my twine won't fit through there. I'd have to get something even smaller to um, thread those with. So that's one thing that you want to be careful about when you're purchasing your beads is um, the size of the hole that is in there. All right, so again, I have this red twine that we're going to be working with. And what I have done is I put a piece of scotch tape around the end of it. It won't unravel when I'm trying to thread it through my beads. Um, and it'll, it'll just go through easier since the twine is so close to the size of the hole. So um, that should help a little bit as well. Okay, so that's still drying. And I'm trying to make sure I don't have paint on my fingers because I don't want to get it on my beads. I want my beads to stay the natural color. So I'm just going to thread a few of these on here. Until it gets to the desired length. So tell me what you guys are doing for Valentine's Day. Any decorating or any um, date nights or anything like that that you have planned? or that you're thinking about for this year. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the hair dryer to speed up the drying process on my hearts because I am ready to place my transfer. And for the heart, instead of putting the I love you like I did on the bag, I'm gonna put this one, which says hugs and kisses. So I realize that's backwards for you guys, but it's cause I'm in selfie mode on my camera. So we're gonna use hug, hugs and kisses, and we are gonna be using um, paste, chalk paste. Um, so this one, we will not be heat setting on the wood. Um, it should be just fine without it. And this is the candy apple red which I thought would look nice with our red thread that we're using or, or uh, twine. So let me dry this really quick. really quick no problem at all all right so we have um, a hole in our heart we've painted it white and so now we are ready to put our hugs and kisses transfer on so to do so I'm just going to remove it from the backer paper and I'm going to place it directly on the heart I'm not going to worry about fuzzing it because again this is not um, as smooth or shiny of a surface um, as like a chalkboard or something like that. So it's not going to stick as firmly. So looks like one of my hearts is going to fall right where the hole is, which is fine. I'll just have one less heart up here at the top. So I'm just going to gently make sure that the transfer is stuck to my heart. And move my beads out of the way. I'm going to again use the mini squeegee and candy apple red paste. I 
I didn't stir this one up, so I'm going to give it a quick stir to make sure that all of the pigment is stirred together and that it's a good consistency. Um, you want it to be a yogurt-like consistency. If it's too thick, you can add a squirt of distilled water and then just stir it up really, really good and um, you will be good to go. All right, so now we're going to just put a little bit on the mini squeegee. It's not going to take very much. And then I'm just going to glide it over my transfer. And the great thing about the chalk paste is if you get it off the transfer um, onto your hands or onto your surface, it, um, it can be washed off. But one thing about red is it is very highly pigmented. And so sometimes it can stain. So you want to be extra careful with the red for sure and some of the other colors too. But um, like white, for example, usually is not an issue, washes off very well. Um, now on the boards, I've had no issue with the red staining. It's on um, other products like um, these little wooden hearts or um, even on my squeegee, wash, washing off my squeegees, it um, usually stains. So let's peel this off and see how it looks. Perfect. Look at that. That is so darn cute. All right. So now that we're done with the red chalk paste, I'm going to put the lid on there. Throw my squeegee in some water with my transfer. And we're going to dry this really quick, and then we're going to start putting it together with our beads and twine. I just need to thread the twine through my heart and tie it on. I want to get it pretty tight. I don't want it to come undone. So now I have a nice little knot on there. I'm going to, the little end with the tape on it that we use to help thread it through, I'm going to put it up inside this first bead and then I'm going to put a little dot of glue to hold it in place. And so that's going to hold my little loose end and help keep my knot from coming undone as well. So let me get, um, I'm using the E6000 glue. And I'm just going to put a little dot of it on the twine. And then I'm going to thread it through. It was easier to thread it without glue on it, I tell you that. There we go. Okay, perfect. So now that should stay inside of that bead there. Get this glue off my fingers. All right, so now, put this away so it doesn't drip on my desk. All right, so now we're just going to push these beads down closer, and we have a super cute little wood bead garland, and I'm going to tie a little loop in the top. So I'm 
So I'm going to tie a little knot first, as close to the little beads as I can. And folks, there is no right or wrong way to do this. I am totally just making this up as I go. So if you think there's a better idea to make this happen, you sure can. In fact, it'd be great if you would uh, post and share what you have found to be easier than what we have done here today. So now I'm just going to make a little loopy here so that you will have something to hang it from. Get it to wrap around. Feel like all thumbs here with you guys watching. Okay, like that. So now I'm gonna loop at the top. I'm going to trim this down so that it's not so long. And. We have a sweet little Valentine garland. And we already made our little Valentine bags that I'm going to use to put it in. And um, so this is going to be my little gift bag. And I'm going to put this little garland inside. And it's going to be a sweet little gift. We also made the striped one. So I can make either another garland or something else to put it in, but we just went ahead and made both of them. So um, what I'm going to do next, um, I'm not going to video, but I will do it off camera. I'm just going to use my heat press to um, set the ink in this fabric bag so that it will be washable. And um, we will be ready to go. So that's it. We did three quick and easy projects. Um, just like that. I mean, let's see, how long have we been on here? I can't see the time on here. Um, so, you know, how easy is that? And you have like quick little easy um, teacher's gifts or gifts for your friends or your neighbors. Um, you just want to do something for them, a little something nice for them. Um, these would be excellent for those kinds of things. And um, they will have a cute little decoration that they can either hang or um, lie on a table, um, either one. And it'll be super special because you handmade it for them as well. Okay, so I'm going to turn this back up. I thank you, thank you all for watching. It's always fun to have you here and helping me with my little crafts that I'm working on. So, um, don't forget to uh, post in the group about the different uh, projects that you're working on. And um, I will um, be watching for those and um, sharing my ideas with you as well. Um, one more thing that I wanted to mention before I go is um, on my business page, I did post um, a, a Starbucks card. Let's see. I'm, I'm tongue tied. A Starbucks gift card giveaway that I'm going to be doing. Um, so if I'm going to share it in the Hen House Crafting Club as well. So hopefully you guys can find it. I can share it in the comments here too, um, just to make it as easy as possible to find. Um, but it's um, a way for you to help me as a small business owner um, grow my following and grow my business um, at no cost to you at all. Um, and by doing so, you are entering in um, for a chance to win a Starbucks gift card um, mailed to you. So a little bit of happy mail for you. And uh, you can go have um, some coffee, tea, hot chocolate, whatever it is that you like. So um, please uh, take a look for that and help me out. I will surely, surely appreciate it. And I will see you all again um, next Sunday. Next Sunday is when I'm going to announce the winner as well. So you're not going to want to miss that one if you participate. Um, and I sure hope that you will. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate I love seeing my hen house crafters. Y'all have a wonderful evening.